This week's Starship updates are absolutely mind-blowing. SpaceX is gearing up for Starship's third integrated flight test. Starship 28 underwent a recent engine replacement, and Booster 10 is in its exciting final processing phase. Teams conducted a mini-launch day rehearsal and added extra protection for launch infrastructures. The second Starbase tower is rising, and guess what? The Pentagon and Starlab Space are eyeing Starship for space missions. Stick around as we unravel every thrilling detail. After completing the installation of the remaining thermal protection system tiles, extensive system checks, and comprehensive assembly verifications, Starship 28 was relocated from the high bay to the rocket garden this past week. The ship was later lifted with the help of the new lifting jig and placed on a processing stand. As seen in this video from Starship Gazer, teams spent the next couple of days performing meticulous work inside the engine skirt of Ship 28 for a thorough inspection of its Raptor engines. On Wednesday, January 31st, SpaceX made the surprising decision to remove one of the sea-level Raptors from Ship 28. The engine removal was an unexpected move from SpaceX. As of now, there is no information available regarding the specific issue that led to the removal of the Raptor engine. It is plausible that anomalies or deviations from expected performance were detected during the thorough examination of the engine, prompting the SpaceX teams to opt for its replacement. The removed engine was later replaced with a brand new one. Considering SpaceX's standard practice of conducting a static fire test for any replaced engine before a flight, it is highly probable that Ship 28 will undergo such a test in the upcoming days to validate the new engine's thrust capability and operational performance. This unexpected engine replacement and subsequent static fire test will inevitably result in a delay for Flight 3, originally scheduled for this month, as announced by SpaceX. Super Heavy Booster 10 is undergoing final processing inside the Megabay. A notable event in this process was the reinstallation of the hot stage ring on January 26, which had been temporarily removed on the 15th. The removal allowed workers to closely inspect the booster's forward dome, housing essential components such as grid fin actuators, avionics, batteries, and other elements. This detailed inspection ensures the overall integrity and readiness of the booster for Flight 3. Work to get the launch pad ready for Flight 3 is nearing completion. The current focus revolves around completing the last round of inspections and necessary repairs on the launch mount. The meticulous process involves attention to crucial elements such as the 20 booster hold down clamps, quick disconnect ports, launch mount shields, and the main booster quick disconnect mechanism. Works have also been underway on the Starship quick disconnect mechanism for the past several weeks. A retraction test of the booster and ship quick disconnect mechanisms was performed lately, mimicking their operation at the time of Starship launch. The test could be a rehearsal of their launch day operations. The launch mount and tower were purged with liquid nitrogen two weeks ago, guaranteeing optimal performance of propellant lines and associated components. The rocket stacking and catching arm, affectionately known as the chopstick, underwent testing last week, evaluating its functionality post repairs and upgrades. The arm was moved up and open fully before closing and lowering. Significant infrastructure upgrades are underway to fortify launch site infrastructure against the powerful forces unleashed by the 33 Raptor engines during liftoff. The launch pad base is undergoing reinforcement with steel plates to counter potential concrete erosion caused by the extreme launch conditions. Two of the vertical storage tanks are being reinforced with large vertical supports and cross bracings to safeguard from impacts during launches. Since the two vertical tanks facing the launch pad were recently scrapped, these two tanks that store water and liquid nitrogen are the ones that are likely to receive the most damage during rocket liftoff. So, they need additional reinforcements. A new concrete blast wall is being installed between the launch pad and the oxygen side of the tank farm, safeguarding essential hardware responsible for pumping liquid oxygen to the launch vehicle. All these measures to safeguard the launch site facilities indicate that SpaceX foresees potential damages to the launch site hardware in upcoming missions and expresses concern that each launch may gradually impact vital facilities. More shields, walls, and reinforcements are anticipated in the forthcoming weeks and months. When the launch site is fully ready and all the vehicle checks and fixes are complete, Starship 28 and the Booster 10 will roll out to the launch site for the final time. They will then be stacked upon the launch mount, setting the grand stage for the eagerly anticipated flight test. The traditional wet dress rehearsal may or may not take place before the launch. The green signal from the Federal Aviation Administration for the launch is pending. The FAA had stated earlier that SpaceX submitted its Flight 2 mishap investigation report and license modification request. Christian Davenport, a space reporter at the Washington Post, revealed on X that the FAA informed him they are on schedule to issue a Starship launch license in mid to late February. 
The United States Department of Defense and Starlab Space LLC have recently expressed interest in utilizing starships to launch payloads into space. According to reports from the Aviation Week Network, the Pentagon is in discussions with SpaceX about potentially commandeering Starship as a government-owned and government-operated asset for sensitive and potentially hazardous missions. The Department of Defense's proposal involves placing Starship under its control for specific missions, allowing the DoD to utilize a ship for a particular mission and return it to SpaceX afterward. This approach diverges from the conventional contracting model for payload launches. Gary Henry, a senior advisor at SpaceX, has stated that the company is actively exploring its options in response to the Pentagon's request. In a separate development, Starlab Space, a joint venture between Voyager Space and Airbus, has selected SpaceX to launch the Starlab commercial space station into low Earth orbit. Starlab, designed by Nanorax, is a proposed commercial space station that is planned to launch in 2028. Following the planned deorbiting of the International Space Station in the early 2030s, Starlab will seamlessly transition microgravity research into the new commercial space station era. It will cater to a global customer base of space agencies, researchers, and companies, ensuring a continuous human presence in low Earth orbit. Starlab's design includes a service module providing power and propulsion, along with a habitat and laboratory module featuring docking ports and a robotic arm. Starlab's modules boast a diameter of about 8 meters, approximately twice the diameter of ISS modules. The size of Starlab made it unlikely to launch on any rocket other than Starship. Starlab will undergo complete outfitting on the ground and be carefully placed inside the payload bay section of the Starship for its launch. Upon achieving full operational status in low Earth orbit, Starlab is poised to serve as a permanent residence for four crew members, dedicated to conducting microgravity research and advancing scientific discoveries. Starlab's four-year development and construction timeline gives SpaceX enough time to move forward with Starship, transitioning from demonstration flights to the actual launch of customer spacecraft. Now, let's delve back into the latest developments at Starbase. SpaceX has initiated the production of sections for the second launch tower at Starbase, marking a significant step in the site's expansion. The first column of a tower section has been successfully erected on the footings of the Sanchez area of the production site. Over the coming days, three additional columns will rise, each over its respective footing. Subsequently, beams and support bracing will interconnect these columns, culminating in the completion of this particular tower section. A Starship launch tower comprises nine prefabricated segments, and SpaceX has already completed seven of them at the Kennedy Space Center facility. In December, one of those completed segments made its transit to Starbase on a barge, with the remaining six segments expected to follow suit shortly. The ongoing construction pertains to the eighth section. When ready, all nine segments will be stacked at the launch site to complete Tower 2. Once completed, SpaceX will equip the tower with rocket stacking and catching arms and the ship's quick disconnect mechanism. The construction of the second orbital launch mount will advance alongside the tower construction. At the production site, inside the Mega Bay, we have boosters 10, 11, and 12, along with booster 13 tank sections. The High Bay hosts ships 30 and 31. Ships 28 and 32 are at the Rocket Garden, meanwhile, Ship 29 is inside Megabay 2. Raptor engines were seen moving into the new Megabay lately, where Starship 29 resides. Ship 29 has already completed its cryogenic proof testing. After engine installation, the ship will begin its static fire test campaign. The methane tank section of Super Heavy Booster 13 was completed inside the Megabay on January 25. The lower oxygen tank section was completed in December of last year. A large composite overwrapped pressure vessel, or COPV, containing carbon dioxide, was installed on Booster 13's oxygen tank section on January 29. Super Heavies utilized two such large COPVs under their chines to store the CO2 required for the engine bay fire suppression system. The carbon dioxide stored in those tanks will be used to purge the engine bay of the booster to evacuate any hazardous gases and prevent an anomaly during testing and launches. Once the methane and oxygen tank sections are ready for stacking, they will be joined together to complete Booster 13. Now, let's discuss some of the latest updates from the world of science and technology. SpaceX launched Northrop Grumman's robotic Cygnus cargo spacecraft toward the International Space Station for the first time. The Cygnus lifted off atop a Falcon 9 rocket from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station on January 30, kicking off its 20th cargo mission to the ISS. After separating from the second stage, the Falcon 9's first stage returned to Earth as planned, acing its touchdown at Cape Canaveral about 8 minutes and 20 seconds after launch. It was the 10th launch and landing for this particular booster. 
The Cygnus separated from the upper stage around 14 minutes and 45 seconds after launch and began its journey towards the space station. Northrop has been launching Cygnus to the ISS for resupply missions using its own Antares rocket since 2013, except for just three missions that used a United Launch Alliance Atlas V. But Northrop retired that version of Antares last year, and the next version, Antares 330, will not be ready to fly until around mid-2025. So Northrop procured three Falcon 9 launches for Cygnus. The Cygnus launched on Tuesday was loaded with 3,726 kilograms of crew supplies, science investigation, and hardware. Some of the science and research supplies include a surgical robot from the Virtual Incision Corporation, a semiconductor manufacturing device from Reed Wirespace, and a metal 3D printer from the European Space Agency, among many others. Please check out the link in the description for the complete list of scientific investigations carried by Cygnus. The Cygnus spacecraft, filled with supplies, hardware, and critical materials, arrived at the orbiting laboratory on Thursday, February 1st. NASA astronaut Jasmine Mogbelli captured it using the station's robotic arm, with astronaut Laurel O'Hara acting as backup. The spacecraft will be installed on the Unity module's Earth-facing port in the coming days and will spend about six months connected to the orbiting laboratory. At the end of its mission, Cygnus, filled with trash and other debris, will depart from the station and burn up in the Earth's atmosphere upon re-entry. The spacecraft will host the final scientific experiment, the Kentucky Re-Entry Probe Experiment 2, on its way back. The experiment, stowed inside Cygnus, uses three capsules outfitted with different heat shield materials and a variety of sensors to obtain data on actual re-entry conditions. The experiment is part of an effort to improve thermal protection system technology. Elon Musk revealed that Neuralink, his neurotechnology company, has successfully implanted its brain-computer interface into a human, marking a significant milestone. Neuralink Corporation is an erotechnology company co-founded by Elon Musk, Max Hadak, and Paul Morala in 2016. The company develops implantable brain-computer interfaces to let people control a computer or mobile device anywhere they go. The Neuralink device employs thousands of 5 micron diameter flexible neural threads sewn into the brain's gray matter to form connections with surrounding neurons. The device then records and transmits brain signals wirelessly to an app that decodes them into actionable commands for computers and vice versa. In short, Neuralink will enable computer control through thinking. In May 2023, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration approved human clinical trials for Neuralink. Subsequently, in September, the company initiated the enrollment process for its first study, targeting individuals with quadriplegia. Named Prime, or Precise Robotically Implanted Brain-Computer Interface, the clinical trial aims to place a small, cosmetically invisible implant in a part of the brain that plans movement. On social media platform X, Musk shared that the first human participant in the clinical trial has received the brain implant and is recovering well. Initial results indicate promising neuron spike detection. Neuralink's inaugural product, Telepathy, is envisioned to enable control of devices such as phones or computers through thought alone. Initially, the technology will be offered to individuals who have lost limb functionality. The company claims that Neuralink will one day make humans hyper-intelligent and let paralyzed people regain their ability to move. Thank you for tuning in for the latest science news and Starship updates. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, leave a comment, and share it with your friends. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you never miss an episode.